Hello everybody, George Kenner, welcome back. First thing I gotta do is I gotta knock out a disclosure. This is not a sponsored video by anyone. In my last video, I mentioned that I may become a partner with Eon Laser in Melbourne, Florida, but at this time, I still have not committed to being a partner. Previously, I went down to what they call the Eon Experience, and I reviewed a grade of lasers that I was interested in, in buying. I ended up buying a smaller laser. I bought the Mira 7 Pro. It was really all that I needed for the type of work that I wanted to do. I wanted to engrave some cutting boards for friends and make small logos, that type of thing, but I really didn't need the biggest machine that I was going to buy. With the prudent counsel of the sales staff, Alicia Spector, I ended up purchasing this one. There was an opportunity to return to Eon in Melbourne, and I went down and I very carefully reviewed a Thunder Nova 24. Now here's the situation. When I arrived, the box for the Thunder Nova was still absolutely pristine the machine had not even been opened. Now I was able to assemble mine and they allowed me the opportunity to walk through the assembly process. In fact, I guided the assembly process along with Leck, the vice president and senior engineer for the company. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna end this up with a speed test. Eon is a company that manufacturers basically a commercial machine. I have purchased the machine as a hobbyist. There are fewer people out there that are interested in having a machine of this quality as a hobby tool. Speed is very important in business. When you see the difference between the absolute matched speed between the Mira and the Thunder Nova 24, you're gonna say, huh, think I know which machine that I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna open up, I made 31 different points um, in notes in differences of the machine that I'm going to share with you. Let's start with point number one. One of the things that weighed heavily on me is I made my selection for the company that I was going to purchase from was the size of the company and were they merely a drop shipper. Well, Eon is not a drop shipper. In fact, I was invited back to their company and their partner network party. It was fancy. First day was a breakfast, um, then a tour of the factory with all of the partners who were very, very nice to me and encouraged me to become a partner and love the videos that I had previously done. We did a factory tour of many of the different machines that Eon uses to support the, the partners and they are in fact starting to cut big steel pieces to make signs and then provide them to um, other people that have, or their clients that have already purchased the machine. They really want to make sure that you have a plug and play experience that is just as easy as possible. They want the machine to arrive to be uncrated and plug it in. Different machines require different setups. That's just common sense. The mirror that I purchased has one plug. Everything is self-contained. The air assist compressor is in that box. It even comes with a stand. Um, the Thunder that I reviewed, although I've looked on their website, I could find no stand that would come with it. What we did was rebuilt the crate and then just set it on top of the crate so that it wouldn't be on the floor, but you'd have to calculate a stand into the cost. Speaking of cost, both of these machines are, I'm gonna call it within the same ballpark, but I'm going to stay away from absolute pricing. And the reason for it is prices change. You may watch this in six months and there'll be a, been a change in the pricing structure or the presentation, a special or something that's done by one of the companies. So I'm gonna leave pricing to you. One of the things that when we went to assemble the machine, there was an extension tube on the Thunder. I wanted to be able to take the chiller that is a standalone piece, unlike the mirror where the chiller is enclosed in the main body. And 
I wanted to put it underneath where the extension tube was. That would not work based upon the wiring and the hoses that were provided by Thunder. I'll call it as a plug and play issue. I'm taking up more of the footprint in my shop for that machine as it comes delivered than with, um, say, the Mira. One of the other things that I noticed was I have one plug that comes off of here. It is a very, very clean system. The Thunder came with proprietary, I'll call them plugs, where if, say, your dog ate the cord or you smashed the cord, you had to have a new cord, you're on your way back to China to get one. It's not the standard that you can go to, um, I'll call it Radio Shack or even Walmart, and buy a replacement plug. It's just not the same system. When this arrived, it came with the Lightburn camera already installed. So if you go and buy the Thunder, you're going to have to do that install for the Lightburn cam camera yourself and pay the additional fee for that camera. It's an option. The Thunder comes with a little gold card. There are some settings that are unique to every one of these machines. So they send you a little gold card, you go into Lightburn and you make those changes to the program so that you're properly calibrated on this machine. Well, what Eon does is they give you a file that comes on a USB stick where all of that is done. You can go right into Lightburn, automatically download it. It's the easiest process and system. Also, Eon has on their support network a setup video list for all of their machines. So if you're trying to figure out what you need to do, you can actually go to them right after you've ordered one of the machines and start seeing everything that you need to do. I would say that the plug and play system in comparison, looking at a Mira 7 or a Mira 9 and say a Thunder Nova 24, this is a much easier machine. It has a smaller footprint and it's been designed as one integrated part instead of um, component pieces. Even the air blower systems in here where on the Thunder, you're going to have an independent air extraction system, a blower that you're gonna to have to put down on the floor. That is just not true with the Mira. Again, from the plug and play aspect, I find this to be a far superior machine in immediate ease of use. Starting with the testing segment, I wanted to be able to test this rotary against the rotary that comes with the Thunder Nova 24, although the Thunder Nova does not come with a rotary. You have to buy one. There's one provided by Rotoboss that's on their site. I believe it's about $1,000. But I was able to, with this, for a little bit less money, advertised, I was able to get a glass project done with this and probably could even play for the laser by engraving glass, cocktail glasses if I wanted to. So this is a, a, a feature that was not available. One other feature that was not available, Wi-Fi that is on this. I can work from my office, send my files out to the machine and come out and start it. I do not have to have a USB connector. My computer does not have to be out here, which again, for some people that would be a big advantage. The, at the experience, they have all the testing equipment that you could want. We had a particulate meter that we placed inside while we were engraving um, on both machines. If you have more particulate, and you can see this even without a testing device, you're going to get a slightly different color on your engrave, which is going to lead to more cleanup time. The more particulates there, it gets reburned onto the, the device that you're cutting or engraving, and it leaves residue. You're going to want to get that off. One of the reasons that I believe that this is so much better a system is that the extraction fan is inside the machine, right underneath the bed in close proximity. When you go to the Thunder, you have to go through a tube out to the extraction air system um, and then dump it. So 
even if you had equal CFM coming out of the hose, because this one's much closer, it's cleaner. The noise of the machine, again, they have all that testing equipment right at the experience. I encourage you to go. If you're not looking at this machine and you were looking at another, they can literally pull out the decibel meter, put it on the machine, and you can see for yourself. Again, go to the experience. One of the other things you can do is you can take and actually measure the wattage of the tube to make sure that it is the same. That's one of the things that they do before they do the pre-shipping check. You literally go with a thermometer type device, you go between each one of the mirrors, just before the mirror, you fire the laser for a specific period of time, and it will give you the wattage that is coming out of the machine, which is very favorable to me. You, you know what you're getting. They know whether they have a problem before they ship it. Go to the warranties and look at them carefully. What you're gonna find is they say that they're two year warranties, but there's preclusions in those and different components in the machine are different. Go look and compare the machines. Um, one of the other really nice features of this is the head. Now the head is lighter and I wanna use an analogy. If you were going down the freeway and you needed to stop in an instant, which would you rather be in a sports car or a semi? Well, of course you'd wanna be in the sports car, it's gonna stop faster. The smaller the head, the less the weight is it's going down the rail system for it to stop. Now what ends up happening is the heavier the head, the longer it'll go and proceed past to get it to a stop point. So what you're gonna find is the heavier the head, the slower the machine, even if the machine says that it's going at a higher speed. So what we did was we did a speed test, the exact same file on the Thunder and on the Mira. And I'm going to show that to you at the very end of the video. You'll be surprised which one's faster, but I bet you it's the one with the smaller head. Could that be a reason that Epilogue and Trotec use the same type of head system that Eon does and they don't use the overhead roller system with a much larger head system? Well, it'd be one of the things that you probably want to look at. I'm very glad that I got this system because of the time differential. Again, these are business machines, although I'm using it as a hobby. If you can save, say, 10 minutes on a 30 minute engrave because it's a faster machine, that would be 20 minutes per hour that you could generate. If you took that over an eight hour day and you were just doing the same engrave, think how many more pieces that you could have manufactured by the end of the day. Time is money and the accuracy of the machine, then the speed in the machine are going to be important. Is I came to the end of the evaluation and I'd made all the notes, 31 different ones, um, points. There's no way that I could award, I'll call it winner class or pick of um, the best machine to anything but the Mira. Go to the experience, see for yourself. If you have any questions, of course, my email is down in the comments. I'd love for you to like and subscribe to, this, to my channel. If there's anything I can do, please reach out to me, let me know. All the best to you. And this is one heck of a good machine.